What up, y'all? Welcome to Hip Hop Chef Cooking and Leisure Show. Today, we're going to be making Fontina cheese grits to go along with some shrimp creole. Uh, a little bit of a shrimp and grits kind of play on it. Uh, right now, we got the special ingredients. We got Fontina cheese. We got a little bit of creole tomatoes diced up, some white onions, and of course, some 1620 shrimp, aka prawns. Uh, about to welcome y'all to the show. I uh, got my homie guys that are coming from New Orleans and also Lafayette, Louisiana, second home. What up, guys? What's up, man? Yeah, man? All right, let's get it cracking. All right, first things first, you want to make sure that this pot gets really hot. Uh, you can kind of feel once it's starting to get hot just by putting your hand over it. I'm not suggesting that you touch the pot. But once that pot, you start to feel the heat coming off of it, you can add in your olive oil uh, for sauteing the shrimp down. Uh, you want to put up enough basically to where once it once it expands from the from the heat, you're actually going to cover the whole coat the whole pan. Want to make sure we can get a nice sizzle on that uh, for the shrimp. We decided to go with the shrimp creole, and what better way to do it than to uh, put this together with a kind of a play off of the shrimp and grits? Since you're from New Orleans, I'm from Lafayette, and we've been both places each other. It's kind of like second home three days. Right. So we're going to do something a little different with it. Go with the creole instead of that barbecue shrimp style. Next thing that we got to do is gonna add the shrimp in. After you add the shrimp, you wanna make sure that you season every step of the way when you're making this uh, dish. Any dish that you make, actually, you wanna go ahead and season it every step. What I'm seasoning right now with is my 321 Hip Up Chef seasoning. It's just a basic seasoning blend of salt, pepper, red pepper flakes. Black pepper, that is. Yeah, man. Don't take long at all. Alright, so once these start to get a nice little sizzle on them, you can tell they're starting to turn pink in color. I'm going to go ahead and add in the vegetables that we need to get going. The reason I left the shrimp heads on is to make sure that the extra flavor is imparted in the dish. So, the first thing we're going to add, we're going to add in our onions. Already diced. Good to go. About one onion, half onion? About a whole onion. Normally, you're looking at about a cup. Cup to cup and a half onions. Next thing we're gonna add in is this combination of green bell peppers and celery. You can smell it right now. Mm-hmm, very fresh. And that's also combined about the same, really the ratio between onions to Celery to bell peppers, three to two to one. Like I said, every step you're gonna season. So after I get this nice and mixed in, I'm gonna season it one time again. Once I've got those in, I'm gonna go ahead and add in these tomatoes. And these are some Creole tomatoes that I also dice fine. Really a small dice, not so much a brunoise. Nice, pretty colors, right? It's the good thing about our Cajun Creole heritage down here in the South Louisiana, you know? Lots of beautiful colors. All right, so the next step, we're gonna go ahead and add in what we call our crushed tomatoes and our diced tomatoes. I like to use certain products. You can find them, different name brands. Pick what you think is comfortable for you, but I, actually, I like to use certain ones myself. Uh, that's what the ones I'll be using at this point. Now this right here, the reason I use both diced and crushed tomatoes is because it gives it a different texture in the food. It's all personal preference at this point. They don't know how good they smell. They, they really don't. Smell of vision is not invented yeah, yet. Not There's no Futurama right here, but uh, it'll be all right. Next step is putting a little roux in there. I know that most people don't know the difference between a Creole and a Cuvillon or a sauce piquant, but the difference really is you're, at, you're, you're marrying a red sauce and you're marrying it with a brown sauce of sorts in Creole cooking. That's enough right there. Now is it different types of that you can use or that specific one you should use? I personally like to use 
Sabois. I do not like the other ones. This is my favorite brand. I find they're the most consistent. Uh, some people would like to make their own roux, but when my roux comes out tasting just like this, I don't. It saves me a little bit of time. Now, also, what I'm going to add in is I'm going to add in a little bit of a serrano pepper to give it just a little heat as well as some lobster base. Lobster base is something that, you know, back in the day when you made crawfish etouffee, you could use like crawfish fat. You could get it at pretty much every local store. Nowadays, if you want to kind of simulate that flavor, you can use a little bit of lobster base. You know, it just takes all that to another level. But then came to lock the mm, face. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. Take a little bit of this. This recipe right here, each jar that I'm using is about eight ounces. And this recipe, I'm probably going to use about a fourth of that. Not even. Alright, so the next part is we're going to make these fontina cheese grits now that the, uh, the shrimp creole is ready. Uh, it's really going to be a compliment to each other. And I think guys are already told you, it tastes fresh yeah. and delicious. Yeah. So, we're going to add a little bit of this uh, grits in this hot water. So next, we're also going to add in a little butter. Like this. Go ahead and knock those out. That's enough butter for all that. Do a little taste test on this as well. Make sure we got it the way it needs to be. Because next step, we're going to be adding those fine tunes. Fontina cheese is going to do, not only is it going to thicken this up, but it's going to make it really creamy and rich. Gonna add this in with that butter. Starting with this right here. Let's do that. Just add a little. Yeah, it's going to be harder to do it like that. Good though. take the rest of that off of there. He's gonna finish stirring it in, whisking it in basically with the whisk. Uh, we're gonna add this heavy cream. That's just gonna round out all the flavors. And for this recipe, I really say it's no less, no more than like a half a cup. So basically my, my goal is for this to sit up just right to where I can use the shrimp and place them on top. I don't want it to take too much. I don't want it to fall, so I want it to sit in there. And right when I pick it up, it should stay in place.
you have it. Shrimp Creole. The Fontaine Cheese Grits. Hip Hop Chef cooking on Legion Show. All right, so I'm sitting here with my man, guys, and uh, we just completed the uh, shrimp creole and fontina cheese grits. We're about to get into this food. I know it smells delicious. You done tasted it a couple times, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wasn't really wanting to wait for this part, but that's all. <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> so be, speaking of that, me saying I love you, man, uh, we go back pretty far. I mean, once I met you, we've been running about five years now. I know there's some things I know about you that maybe not everybody else is pretty privy to. Uh, how long you been in the business? So I've been doing music since what, 11? So it's been about what, 12 years? I'm 23 now, so 12 years. So yeah. I know, I know. During that time, you put out a few albums. You got some of the wings. Uh, how many total? Like you, you, basically, how many you got on, on deck? Only got, only got two. Two on deck. Right. Okay. Two mix. I put two mixtapes out. Two mixtapes. Um, what were the names of them, just uh, so they know in case the they The first one was called Revamp. That okay. was when I was in high school. I think I was like 16 years old when I dropped Revamp, and that really just, just pushed it. And then I just dropped one, it was called uh, In The Beginning. And that's right. the, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the start up to lead into the albums now. Okay. And uh, by the way, that, if you have not heard in the beginning, it's pretty fly. Uh, check my man out. Uh, that being said, he did say it's leading into the new albums. I know that you got some new singles that you got coming out. We're going to be getting to a couple of DJs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to tell them a little bit about those singles. First single is uh, is actually called No Sleeping. It's just about just grinding. That's, you know, it's been a process that we in. It's just a grind process. You know, a lot of people miss that. They skip that. And uh, then the one after that is called On The Low. And, you know, that's how we do. We just move on a little. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, you're originally from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, by way of Katrina, you moved to Lafayette, which obviously we kind of swept and swap on who's mm -hmm. second home is yeah. what right now. <laughs> you know, I'm always in New Orleans. Shout out to everybody from grassroots and uh, and my people that put on, you know, like uh, uh, Sound Clash and, and, and the likes, you know, that's, that's my people out there. Truth Universal, On Point L. Williams, Lyric Hill, the best of people that's down with uh, you, fam. But that mm -hmm. being said, uh, have you been getting any uh, any push in any other cities? What, what cities are you seeing are showing you a lot of love right now in the state? Actually, well, in this state? Yeah, in the state. Oh, um, I mean, the normal, I mean, pretty much all the cities, you know, well, the big cities, you know, pretty much yeah. only Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, mm -hmm. but I've been getting a lot of attention in like uh, Seattle, DC, Word. Atlanta, uh, Miami, um, a lot of couple, well, a lot of places in Florida, mm -hmm. um, you know, places in Mississippi, things like that. So a lot of people starting to see what I'm doing, and you know, that's a big thing right there. That's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. Uh, what, that being said, I know we talked about how long we've been in the game, but, but what made you want to get into the music business? It's actually kind of crazy. Um, my family, you know, I grew up with a musical family. Mm -hmm. Not not as, not as far as saying recording, but everybody has been in the band. You know, if you're from New Orleans. You know, nine times out of ten, you're a band head, or you yeah. have been, you know, or somebody in your family. And you know, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sisters, you know, right. all deal with the band. Um, but like I said, the way I actually started rapping was I had a friend, one of my best friends, his name is Taylor, uh, T. Cash, Taylor Donaldson. And uh, he used to rap all day long. It was what, sixth grade? He just, just right. rap, just, just yeah. rap all day long. Teacher leave out, he rap. And then, uh, so we got in seventh grade, and it was just like one day. You know, this is the normal, you know, he's spitting, just rapping, rapping, and he stopped, and as soon as he stopped, I just started flowing for about three to five minutes, just non-stop, and he was like, man, you know, you need to really do this, you know, you need to start writing. Kind of gave me a push next Yeah, gave me a push, like, and ever since then, you know, I just started writing, and that's a way to, you know, put my life down, you know, give people, you know, what I see, you know, through my eyes, because everybody sees something different. So, indeed, your vantage that. point is definitely different. Yeah. Last question before we get into this food, is there anything that you'd like to see happen in the state's hip-hop scene, or is it something that you uh, are liking that you're seeing in the state's hip-hop scene? Um, I want to see a lot more unity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's one thing that you miss in music, you know, because everybody's so stuck in, well, I'm doing my thing. You know, I ain't, I ain't got time to help you do your thing. That's not mm -hmm. how it should be. You know, as far as being an artist, you're supposed to come together with other artists. Right. You know, and you get the fans and the people, you know, what they want. So that's pretty much, you know. I know you see to. a lot of it, like when we were putting on Hip Hop and the Fats, <laughs> me and Swell Wise Words Productions. Uh, well, that. You see it with Arm Rhymery and you see the fact that we're all kind of linked together. It's, it's a pocket of mm -hmm. us. 
but yeah, I agree with you. I'd like to see more of the young cats mm -hmm. get into that kind of thing myself. All right, well, let's go ahead and dig in, man. Let's see what you think about these flavors mm -hmm. all together, baby. Mm -hmm. I know you said you only mess with a certain beer, but you know. I'm gonna drink it, you know. You know, you know I'm gonna <laughs> drink it. That's yours, this one. Thank you, sir. Ah! He's like, all right, pick that my, my, my spoon and everything. Now, remember, we left the heads on. So fun. There you go, baby. This is what we taste in like. First thing I'm gonna taste the mix first. Get it all together. I'm gonna say this one for last. <laughs> now the thing is, you made it look so pretty, but I'm about to mess it up. That's what it's for. Edible art. Mm. Ça c'est bon? Perfect. It's awesome. Perfect. I wish y'all could taste it, but <laughs> I'm gonna taste He's it. Don't worry, right I'm gonna now. taste it for you. <laughs> go out a pair with that beer. Actually, go good. Beer not, it's not that bad. Not that bad. I know it's not your favorite. <laughs> I don't like harsh beers. Right. Yeah. Well, you hear it first, uh, hip hop chef, cooking and leisure show, my man Geyser. Next thing up. Sneakers and heaters, stay tuned.